It's day nine of drawing everything every day. And today we're gonna to be drawing a camera. I don't know the type of camera this is. It's just some old camera I picked up at a, uh, an antique store, but it's kind of cool looking and it's old timey. And it should be a whole heck of a lot easier to draw than the Hot Wheel we just drew. Cause that was tough. I did not like that. I mean, I liked it, but <laughs> cars are tough. This is gonna be pretty simple. It's, it's just a box with some circles. So let's start off with a box. Um, I'm just gonna do a rectangle here. And I think, if I remember correctly, when I was drawing this, which was literally an hour ago, when I was drawing this, um, I was drawing the right side bigger than the left side, and I kept saying, no, it's farther away from me. So. I kept adjusting to make that smaller and then make the left side a little bigger. Just a little bit of perspective. The part that's closest to you is gonna be a little bigger. The part that's farther farther from you is gonna be a little smaller. And um, I had to adjust as I went. Now we're giving it our third dimension and we're gonna be just looking at the photo. Oh, and speaking of which, I hope you guys are taking screenshots when I put the, uh, the item that we're gonna be drawing onto the screen. Um, normally I would put it full screen or, or, or half screen, but when I'm doing especially the horizontal pieces, there's just not much room, so I'm kind of sticking a little visual representation of that in the top corner. But when you see me drop the camera in, use a screenshot of that, that'll be much better. Okay, so now I am looking at the box and I'm measuring where the lens, that cap, see how it, it, it covers the bottom right corner of the box, that's what I'm doing. I'm measuring the points and seeing where they line up. So right here, I am looking at this area on the right side and see how it doesn't touch the line at the top. So that's what I'm comparing it to. This is how we do proportions. This is how we get stuff right. We make a shape and then we compare, all right, this covers this bottom right corner but it doesn't go as high as to touch that uh, that line across the top. Okay, good. And then you, you work from there. And that's why if you get your shapes wrong, everything is gonna be wrong based on that. And then wrong is relative, of course, too, because we're not going for perfection. We're just doing our best to kind of guesstimate the shapes. Um, mine isn't perfect. Uh, it's not supposed to be perfect, but I'm I'm using my eyes. I'm I'm measuring um, in my mind where things are. I hope this is making sense. Um, I, I I I was thinking about it while I was drawing, which is why I drew the little arrows and everything because that's that's kind of what it was going through my mind at the time. Was um, oh, this is just a little off center from left to right of the box and the the lens cap kind of thing is covering the bottom right and that's what I was looking for. And now I'm just filling in all of the shapes. There's these two rectangles, there's a circle on the right, there's this other circle right here, and then there is another circle. And I'm, and I'm constantly looking up and saying, how is this in approximation of size and distance and what's it touching? Um, do you see how that circle kind of goes over the top uh, a little bit? Um, that's that's what I'm doing. So I'm just measuring, measuring, measuring uh, one against the other and using that as my reference point. Which is really interesting if you are traveling and you are drawing something, a building, a place, a work of art, something, you start to notice all of these little things that you wouldn't have noticed just taking a photo. And, and, and that's what I love about drawing everything every day. I, you, I've had this camera for years. I've never looked at it the way that I'm looking at it now. I didn't notice all of the things that I am current. It was just a camera, but now I'm studying it. I'm learning about it. I'm, I'm dissecting it, all of the proportions and everything. It's a great way for you to really get to understand something. It could be architecture. It could be uh, a work of art. It could be uh, a place, but by drawing it, you really get to know it. And and this is, when you look at it, you're like, oh my God, there's all of these dials and circles and, and, and it looks rather difficult when you first look at it, but it is 
a very simple thing to draw. Um, so again, you, you, it's just a box with a bunch of circles on it. So I, I think um, it was Saturday morning and I'm going, I don't want to draw another car or something really difficult. I'll draw this camera. Um, but despite that, it, it is time consuming and there are a lot of really interesting things to measure up and to try to get right. Um, it, I think it's a fun one, you know. Um, the the dials. Oh, Mr. Clock says hi. It's twelve o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Clock. Um, so the dials, if you look, um, the, the one on top that I'm working on right now has little like ridges to it, like uh, like gear type of ridges. And so I just kind of just did like a little um, zigzag to indicate that. And I'm not writing in all of the numbers and I'm not making sure that all of the little lines are exactly where they were. I'm just adding this in. It's just for decoration, just to kind of uh, get that. Um, this little thing, I, at least when I pull it uh, down, it lets me pull uh, push the trigger, which snaps the shutter. So I don't know if it's a it's a, some sort of advance or anything, or a timer or something. I'm not 100% sure. Well, what was interesting is this style right here actually has ridges too, and that connects to some ridges that are on the lens. So I don't know how they kind of connect, but it seems like the first style. Uh, when you turn that, will make that flat dial turn, which then might in turn make that ridge that I'm currently drawing on the lens work. Again, I've had this camera, just I think I got it for $10 and I thought it was cool. I've never looked at it this, this intently before. And by the way, I, I am so impressed with the Hot Wheels that you have drawn. Um, they are so much better than mine. <laughs> so uh, thank you for sending them to me. Thank you for posting them. Um, for those of you asking where I see them, uh, I think the majority of the ones that I've seen are on Instagram. People will post them and then tag me. Um, I've seen a couple on Facebook and um, I, I, I very rarely see any on YouTube. Um, I don't check my tick, my, my um, Twitter. Uh, I don't think I've seen any on really TikTok, but uh, seems that you know. But but again, um, you're welcome to post on our Discord as well. But you guys are so talented. You're all so talented, and um, so thank you for for showing me. And I'm so happy that you're all enjoying uh, doing this along with me. Okay, we've got a couple more minutes, so I'm going to answer some questions from the comments. Maria from Brazil asks, where do I find the motivation to record to YouTube regularly? Um, the motivation comes partly from self-motivation. Uh, I've always been really good at forcing myself to make art or do, do the thing that I want to do, um, despite every fiber of my being not wanting to do it. Um, that is something that's, that's a willpower thing. That's part of it. The other part is, um, seeing the feedback. I, I think it's, it, it, having people say that the thing that I love to do is making them love to do that thing too, makes me happy. Um, knowing that I'm having a positive influence on the world in any small way, makes me happy and it encourages you to to do more um i i think also as an artist we just have this need to make art this need to create where there is nothing we want to make something and so i think it's a combination of those things so if you're having a if you're having trouble finding motivation um find out if making art is something you want to do as a career like is that because for some people making art is something that they want to do when they're in the mood for other people like myself it's something that I have to do 
It's, it's, um, it's something that um, is just inside me and it's something that I want to do. And then it's just a matter of what kind of art and how do I present it and whatnot. But I, I feel like I need to create something every day. I just feel like, like I've got so much in me that I want to do. And Daniel's, uh, Daniel's sketch art says, uh, Hi Scott, I have a question that you can answer in the series. My cousin wants to draw. I got good at drawing by drawing everything every day. Should I tell her to do the same? She is still a kid. You can suggest it. Um, it might be something that they that they'd like. It might be something that they don't. Um, but I think if it's something that they want to do, and and you said that she wants to draw, um, then maybe you do it with her if you can. I don't know if you're in the same area or not, or maybe you can do it uh, virtually. Um, but I know a lot of times drawing together is more fun, and um, maybe. Maybe she could use a buddy to sketch with, you know, and, and maybe you'll sketch with her. But it's very nice of you to think of her. Yash Singh asks, what art supplies can I buy for under $5? Uh, I did a video on that. Um, I think it's um, making art shouldn't make you broke. I know it's a stupid name, but it's, it's something I just came up with. Anyways, um, and I bought a $3.50 sketchbook. I bought a pack of pencils and an eraser. And I think it cost me, oh, and a pencil sharpener. No, I didn't buy an eraser, I bought a pencil sharpener. I think it cost me $8. But um, pen pencil, eraser, pencil sharpener, and a sketchbook. That's what I would get. If I had $5 and I would fill that sketchbook with just the world, I would write notes, I would sketch. That's all you need. And, and, and by doing that, you're gonna be the best artist. You can always get into paint later. You can always get into other mediums later, but just get that drawing down. Okay, Sharon Tree asks, what pencil is this? And how did you get the smell out of the medic bag? Um, the pencil is a dark purple uh, Prismacolor pencil. And I got the smell out of the medic bag by just airing it out, I think. Um, I tried different lotions and this and that or whatever. I, I cleaned it as best as I could, but uh, I think for the most part, it was just a matter of just letting it sit out and air air dry for a little bit. And Stella asks, uh, hi Scott, hope you're having a great day. I am, thank you Stella, I hope you are too. I had one thing to ask you. So I love your art. Oh no, I'm sorry. So I love art, boy that was really presumptuous of me. Um, so I love art and drawing, but I am not planning to follow it as a career. Do you think I'd still be able to enjoy art while I'm doing the career I have followed? By the way, I'm loving this series. Um, yes, absolutely. And I think that's wonderful because if you can make art just because you love art, not to try to make money, I think that's the best way to make art. Uh, um, and, and I try to do that. I try to make art that I love, but you'll see me painting Harry Styles or <clears throat> pink or, or, you know, whatever, because people are requesting it. I'm not painting them because I want to. I'm painting them because it's kind of part of my job at this point. And um, it's not a bad thing, but I do long for doing larger paintings. I do long for just spending time doing Art Nouveau kind of things or whatever, rather than trying to finish a painting in 90 minutes uh, during a live. Uh, I, I do long for painting without a camera in my face uh, recording. So I would say if you can have a career and, and, and have that be your thing and then come home and then paint or draw or whatever, that's, that's the perfect thing, absolutely perfect. Um, and, and, and I would say 100% do that if you can. That, that would be great. Lord Shamumakuku, oh gosh, okay. Uh, asks, hi Scott, I have a question. Can I combine alcohol markers with watercolor? Absolutely. Uh, if you look at the um, Aurora painting that I did, I used watercolors, I used everything on it. If you looked at uh, the Jane Austen, the, the first day of Women's History Month, uh, I used alcohol markers in the background for the uh, the kind of the stencil thing. You can. Watercolors you want to do on cold press watercolor paper, which is very absorbent. 
So when you do markers, the markers are going to spread because the, the paper is so absorbent. It, it, it's not like working on marker paper. So just be aware of that. When you put down markers on watercolor paper, they spread. And Super Power Star asks, how do you find your art style? And um, I did a video on that. Look for um, my art is a mosaic. And it talks about where I got all of my influences and in, in my art style. Okay, I think we're pretty much done here. This isn't my best piece. Um, it's not my best sketch, but it's, it's a camera. I did it. I drew something. It was about 15 minutes. And that's all we're here for. So I hope to see your camera and I hope you're enjoying drawing everything every day and thanks for following along. I'll see you for the next one.